Mm, excuse me. I what you call it. I see. Okay, no. I um I forget that I have all those alarms set. I forget. Uh, my that was my TikTok prayer alarm to come on here and actually do this. And so normally I just keep on going when my alarm goes off, but um it ends up messing up my audio. So um I had to restart it. The people that want to hear it are going to come and hear it. And the people that don't, we just got rid of them. I don't even know what the comment section was looking like, but it didn't look like it was looking too good. Um, so we're going to get back into the word. Um, again, that was just my alarm. I'm going back to hiding my comments and I'm going to keep on talking. Let's do this. So when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you again. And we're in a season where people are confused. They're confused at what they see. They're confused at what they're experiencing. They're confused at what God wants for them. They're confused at everything that's taking place, even to the point of feeling vulnerable and susceptible to attack. I feel unprotected. I feel uncovered. Why? Because that's the season. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Oftentimes we're saying, God, what's going on when we have not did our due diligence, right? The, the, the key to walking with Jesus is Jesus. Let's be real. Salvation, righteousness, holiness, uh, deliverance, all that stuff revolves around Jesus. As long as we stay with Jesus, Jesus sets us free. But I don't want to highlight that to the point that we miss that God equips us to be intentional about our decision making, it equips us to be disciplined in our behavior. And, and you know, that, that's really it. God equips us to stand in, in him, truth be told. Victory was won on the cross. We receive salvation at that very moment. And so we walk with Jesus and we talk with Jesus by staying in his word and in his spirit in Psalms and in hymns and prayer and petition and, and fasting. But at the end of the day, we do all of that, that we might be able to escape the prison, escape the prison of our flesh, come out of our flesh into the spirit of God, giving us revelation, wisdom and insight. That way, when we come down from the spirit and back into the world, for we're in the world, but not of the world, we're able to then take everything that we got in the spirit and apply it within our flesh. And that is where we are disconnected. Okay, great. I've worshiped and I've praised God. I done danced and I done shouted across the entire church waiting for my breakthrough and my miracle, not understanding that that was not going to make a million dollars miraculously appear in my bank account. That was going to equip my mind to go out into the world and go get it. I really don't want to get ahead of myself, but the Bible even talks about how the body is the temple of the Lord God. So God, when we get into worship, we get into prayer, we get into study and we have these moments with Jesus. We are able to step outside of our body and into the Lord Jesus, which is in our body. He's arising in our body. If I could say this just the right way. Then he dwells in us. We are his hands and his feet to walk out his purpose and his mission in this world. Meaning two things. If we're not in alignment with God, we won't have his spirit to carry out the mission. And then there's number two. If we do not walk these feet, if we, we don't move these feet, if we don't move these hands, nothing can be accomplished, right? But how do we effectively move our hands and feet? How do we, you know, I always say, I don't want to just be moving aimlessly, but I want to be effective. How do we get to the place of being effective that we're accomplishing things and that we're growing and that we're not doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results? I told you guys that my first video that ever got me on this TikTok, that y'all, that they got y'all seeing me on TikTok, I said doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result is what the definition of what? Insanity. How do we get to the place of stepping out of being insane? And stepping into progress, progression, progressiveness. I was thinking about Paul and how Paul said, you know, he has this duality where he desires to do good. He gets stuck in doing bad when he desire. And what he hates to do is the very thing that he's absolutely falling in. I said, OK, maybe as Christians, we are to live in this place of duality forever. But then I fell on. First or second Corinthians? Give me a moment. Then I fell on. Um, first Corinthians 9 and 27. 
Paul says he's disciplined himself to make his body a slave. That after he has preached to everybody else, he himself is not disqualified. So Paul makes a clear, truthful declaration that we as humans are stuck in this place of duality, being in the flesh, right? With the flesh is God's, the body belong, belongs to God's, but we have yet to be redeemed in our flesh. So our flesh yet still has a sinful expectation. So on one half, I'm stuck in sin. On another half, with my mind, I'm serving the law of Christ Jesus. I'm living in a place of duality. He says it's expected. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ that I'm able to find deliverance simply because of him, not by my actions, not that I was able to come to the point of delivering myself, but that God set me free from myself by his grace. I said, okay, that's great. But when do we get to the place of discipline? As the Bible does not say that grace supersedes discipline. Rather, grace is our aid in discipline that when we yet still fall short, it's not the end of the world. Hmm. As I continued to read my Bible, I fell on Corinthians. I can't remember what it was. Nine and seven. It was either one or two. Just read your whole Bible. You'll find it. Where he says, okay, I'm thankful for God's grace in Romans. Now I'm in Corinthians, which comes after Romans. And... I'm disciplining myself. So maybe just maybe duality is not the end. Maybe just maybe if we continue to accept living in two places at once, we'll never actually get to what God intended from the beginning was to be all the way in and never out. Paul says, okay, I'm thankful for grace in that season, but now I understand that I serve a God of evolution, a God of forward, a God, a moving God, right? Therefore, I have to go from grace into discipline. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you, understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil. Why are we experiencing a season of confusion? Why are we experiencing so much calamity? Why are we experiencing so much chaos? Because we keep on doing a two-step with evil. <laughs> We keep on doing this dance with evil and it's not evil as we believe it to be because evil does not look like what you think it does. Evil isn't always witches coming down like, I don't know, I don't watch scary movies, that, that, that fake stuff, but it looks, it, evil doesn't always look like that. Sometimes evil looks like what you look like when you look in the mirror and you can't recognize it if you're not willing to step outside of yourself to deliver you from the way of evil. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Who will deliver me from evil? Because I come to find that maybe just maybe I might be the problem. Paul does give himself grace. He says, if I'm doing what I hate to do, clearly it can't be me, but something in me. But at the same time, it's him. <laughs> Therefore, I always say our greatest enemy is not Satan, but our self. Our greatest enemy is not what? The enemy, but the inner me. So how do we deliver ourselves from ourselves? Yes, the Lord Jesus, but he equips us by discretion, which is discernment, will preserve you understanding, which is mastery over this book will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil. From the man who speaks perverse things, that means you won't have to argue with anybody because God will handle it. It'll deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. It's so intentional. I said that you watch the company that you keep. Everybody wants to talk about the Lord Jesus. You got people wearing crosses that don't even worship him. To walk. Leave, from those who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. I think about a lot of pastors that I've been around behind the scenes that have used the word to um, give grace to their own evil and grace to their own inadequacies and grace to the areas where they fall short. We cannot grace ourselves to the point of stupidity. I had someone say to me, I'm learning to grace myself. I said, okay, yeah, grace yourself, but don't be dumb, right? We're not going to grace ourselves to the point of being idiots. God does not even do that. The Bible says, um, all things are law for me, lawful for me, yet some things are not good for me. I think that's one of my texts. We might just flip there right now. Um, well, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Why did I mark this? What, what chapter am I going to? Um, hmm. Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay. I know where I'm going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, six. Okay, I'm in second Corinthians. That's why I'm confused. I need to be in the first one. Okay, first Corinthians, first Corinthians, first Corinthians. Right here, perfect, fam. Okay, 
Paul goes on to say, let me mark that page. All things are lawful for me. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. We're going to go to 20. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way there in this moment, but this is one of the texts I'm going to talk about. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Don't be dumb. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of anything. You know what's not good for you when it's trying to enslave you. It's a difference between, oh, I just wanted to do this because I wanted to do this and something was trying to manipulate me and convince me to do it. I think about the times where we read God's word and it so boldly tells us to do the opposite of what we were going to do. And we try to come up with every reason to yet still do it. And I don't Y'all can take that for what it is. 13, foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Let's come back to this. All things are lawful for me, but some things just aren't that good. From those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, all things are lawful. Some ways aren't good. Leaving the path of uprightness to walk in darkness. Not that I don't know better. It's just that I won't do better. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says, do not be deceived. I believe that's James. And I'm so thankful that I have it right have it written down right here. Let every man be swift to hear and slow to listen. Do not be deceived. Do not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. From those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the way of darkness who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. Delight in the perversity of wicked. Delight in it. I had someone say, well, I think this person is changing. Oh, I think this, that, and the third, but they're delighting in evil. Paul didn't delight in his evil. He said very clearly that I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Oftentimes, I think our problem is that we love the very things that we're supposed to hate. God said, don't get in the relationship. He exposed the person soon, quick, fast, and in a hurry. But we decided to love the very thing that we were supposed to hate. Why, Robin? I had people commenting as I've been talking about homosexuality and Christianity and me coming out of it. Not that I'm just miraculously changed, delivered, and transformed. That's not how that happened. But that I have an understanding of what it is. Therefore, knowing better is to do better. Therefore, I have to be intentional about making better decisions despite what my flesh may want to do. I have to remind my flesh that no, this isn't beneficial to where we're going in life, right? Hmm. As I've been saying that, I have people reach out to me, well, Robin, you don't love yourself. Why don't you love yourself? That's not just it. <laughs> hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. You can absolutely love yourself and hate what it is that you do. The problem is we are be we we've confused loving ourselves with loving what we do as if we're not living in a place of duality, as if we're not living in between good and evil at the same time. So if I confuse the two, I'll end up loving what I'm supposed to hate. I'll end up exalting what I'm supposed to destroy. I have to be, what is the word? Discretion. Dis not, not discipline, but yes, discipline. Discretion, but I have to have discernment. I have to be able to see clearly Discernment will preserve you. Discretion will, un will, will preserve you. Understanding mastery will keep you. I've been preserved by my discernment. It's preserving me. Understanding is keeping me. It's not that they're different, but they actually go together. I'll be preserved and I'll be kept by my, my discernment and my understanding. For how can I discern something that I do not yet understand? Where does understanding come from? The mouth of God. How does God speak to us? He speaks out of this book. Let's keep on moving. I hope I'm making sense. Who rejoice in doing evil. I have no gladness towards people who rejoice in doing evil. I thought we were supposed to love everybody. The Bible doesn't say that. Even Jesus did not pray for the world. The Bible does say, I did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. But it's not that we were supposed to ever love evil. He, he wanted to save the world, that those who were willing to get out of evil and those who were willing to turn from their wicked ways would have an opportunity of repentance. But Jesus never cared to save evil or else Satan would be saved, would he not? I don't know if y'all ready for that conversation. We'll move. Who rejoice in doing evil? I can't stand people who are glad at doing evil. You'll know a tree by its fruit and delight in the perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths to deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters her words, basically to deliver you from false 
faces, from facades and from code switching, perfect code switching to the point that you're not even able to notice the switch. You don't even know they have another side. They hide it so well. Verse 17, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God for her house leads down to death. You got to watch who you lay with. You got to watch who you fellowship with. I keep on trying to tell you and her paths to the dead. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. We're at 21 and 22. Let's focus here. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. The upright will dwell in the land. That's great. But I'm not in a season of wanting things that I can't keep forever. And the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. I'm reminded of David who said, Lord, let not my enemies triumph over me. We're going to leave that on the floor. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. I'm going to read it and we're going to break this down as well. Hopefully at the end, you'll get something out of this. Warning against sexual or immorality. I feel like it may be beneficial to read chapter six. It is Sunday. I don't want to make it a Bible study, but I feel like that's the only reason that we as Christians are failing is because we're not in this world enough, word enough. That and prayer. So maybe the simple solution is not with fancy words, but with the word of God. Let's go. We're going to read all of chapter six. Um. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? I'm reminded of my cousin who had a disagreement with me and they chose to go to the law and try to press charges on me. Mm, let's move. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? That does not mean to judge people. It just means that God has a specific placement for you in the authority of judgment. Okay? So many people are judging others in the name of being Christian, not understanding that that's not how it works. And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? Meaning, why go outside of the brethren? I would even say in looking for friendship and looking for business partners and looking for relationships, why go outside of the brethren? I say this to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. The Bible says a wise man seeks good counsel. You got to watch the company that you keep. You're asking a stupid person to help you with a stupid problem. You need somebody wise up in the mix. I say this to your shame. It is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one who will be able to judge between his brethren? I cannot judge you if you're doing what I'm doing. Um, the Bible would even go on to say that if you have a plank in your eye, shut your mouth and get the thing out your eye before you go on and talk to somebody else. A lot of our problem is simply that we'd rather hold on to people God wants us to get away from because um, I think I've already said that we love ourselves more than we love Jesus rather than letting them go. Why are we still sat stagnant? Why are we still stuck? Why are we in these systems and these self-deprecating cycles? Because the people around us are promoting and supporting it. Bad company corrupts good behavior, um, as the Bible would say. But brother goes to law against brother and that before unbelievers. We'd rather go to unbelievers for solution. I'm so irritated with people reposting people who just say opinions. Kiki Palmer just saying opinions. Well, who else have I seen? I told you about somebody, T.S. Madison. Why are we even listening to her talk about Jesus? Uh, somebody else posting, I don't know, just because on what's her name? I Spice said something. You want to put a motivational beat over it and now you're listening to them like they know what they're talking about. Um, my gosh. Anyways, but unbelievers. Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. It's already bad that we're up here arguing against one another when there's so much chaos, calamity, and confusion in the world. We should be together arg arguing against everything else. We should be together warring against everything else, but we're so divided within our own members. I went on to say about the Black Lives Matter movement. No, I don't support the Black Lives Matter movement because we can't even support ourselves within our own community. We have hate. We have hate. We have um, um, disagreements. Um, I don't want 
want to talk about black on black crime, they say there's white on white crime, but I'm black. I'm not white. I can't talk about what white people do. I can talk about black on black crime. And as a black person, how can I expect a, how can I respect a black movement when we in our own communities cannot get on one accord? When we're killing old people, robbing old people, murdering old people, but you want us to, but, but you want other people to respect our movement, to give us more rights. No, maybe our rights need to be taken away because if anything, black people are the spiritual foundation of the world. At the very least, if I can't get along with you, I should get along with Jesus and he'll get me along with you. But we can't even get along with our communities because we haven't got along in our households. We can't get along in our households because we haven't got along with Jesus. It's a domino effect. We're so busy fighting one another. I said people are fighting for gay rights and love. Y'all don't even like each other. Two TikTokers just killed another gay man. Two gay TikTokers killed another gay man. And y'all sitting up here wanting to fight for some rights and wanting to fight for love? This don't make sense. We're not on one accord. But taking it out of the black community, taking it out of the gay community, taking it out of every single other community in the world, let's just talk about us as a whole, Christians, the body of Christ, the church of God in Christ, not Kojic, the, 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 the title, but literally as people, we are the church of God in Christ Jesus. We're so divided. We can't get on one accord. Oh, this ain't right. Oh, that ain't right. Baby, it's all in the Bible. There's no reason we should ever be confused about being, as being Christians. There's no reason there should be so many theological debates. There should be no reason that we have so many ideologies and interpretations of the word because it's clear, it's clean, it's concise, it's right in our face. It's front and center. Now, therefore, it is already an utter, utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why are we arguing and bickering with one another? I'm going to leave it on the floor. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat and you do these things to your brethren. You reap what you sow. Why is there so much chaos, calamity and confusion in the world? It's because everybody is aimed at hurting somebody else. I think I got to knock you down to lift me up. I think in order for me to go higher, you got to get lower instead of us all collaborating, instead of us all being on one accord. The Bible even says be of the same heart and the same mind. We want to go against each other. We want to condemn people where there's no condemnation, rebuke people where it's not necessary, lay hands. You need deliverance instead of just having a simple conversation and asking someone, hey, how are you? What's going on in your household? What's going on in your life? How are you feeling? I understand that you're smiling every day, but just because you're smiling doesn't mean that you're happy. Be. I don't know about you, but I can smile. Clearly, I wasn't just smiling. You can move a face muscle and it not be authentic to how you're feeling on the inside. But we're so full of ourselves. In fact, we can't even discern the heart of God because we ourselves can't even discern our own self. I don't know. Not you yourselves do wrong and cheating. You do these things to your brethren. Coming at one another hating one another, then wondering why we're so confused. How do you think you can ever get right by doing wrong? Verse nine, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, hold on. How do we get to a place of being righteous if the unrighteous aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God? <laughs> by sticking with Jesus. Let's move. Do you do not be deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor not fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor, hom nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. I told you God has something for us, but there's a requirement to receive the blessing. It's not that you focus on what you're doing wrong. It's not that you focus on where you're falling short, because how would you know what you're doing wrong or where you're falling short if you're not just walking with Jesus that he might reveal it to you? I may think that this is the problem when that's not actually the problem. Let me let me make it plain and clear. I may think that me putting on this lotion at 644 in the morning every day is a sin, but it's not so much that that's the sin as that is a byproduct of the sin. As a matter of fact, in order to get to the root of the issue, only God can reveal that. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. So if I'm ever to to tap into the solution. I've got to stop focusing on the effects of the problem, right? And such were some of you. 
Such were some of you. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. Um, every saint was a sinner before they changed up. I think that's what the song that, said, that, that Chloe came out with. I love that song. It says, every saint was a sinner until they changed up. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. And such were some of you. You were all of these things, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I think sometimes we forget God's goodness. I think we forget the equipping of the Holy Spirit. I said it's one thing to wonder about yourself, and it's another thing to wonder about God. I can wonder if I'm able. I can wonder if I'm capable. I can wonder if I'm worthy. I can wonder if it's possible about myself. But when I start to wonder about the character of God, when I start to wonder about the perspective that God has about me, when I start to wonder about God's heart posture towards me, that is when I fall. Understand, Adam and Eve didn't fall when they started to question themselves. Eve fell when she started to question the character of God, the character of God that says, why would I ever want you to be in confusion? I have clarity here placed before you. So I can wonder if I'm hearing God clearly, but I can never wonder if God is of confusion or of clarity. Now I want to get to where I'm focusing. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Didn't I read it already? I did, but I didn't focus on it. All things are lawful for me. Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave on the cross. All things are absolutely lawful. But all things are not helpful. In fact, walking with God is beginning to understand what is not helpful. So though it's lawful, why would I partake in what kills me? Why would Jesus go through the process of redeeming us just for us to still dance and play in the very thing that he saved us from. Understand, God did not die on that cross so that you can do whatever it is that you wanted to do. You could sin, aimless, sin aimlessly and freely and, and experience life to the best of your abilities in sin and in foolishness and in unrighteousness. He didn't do that. He did it that we might be equipped by his spirit to say no. Before sin had such a hold on us that literally we could not say no. And by us not saying no, we died immediately because we broke the law and the punishment of sin was death. We died immediately. Jesus said, okay, I'm going to die. Not only so that you have an opportunity to repent because the price of the wages of sin have been paid for, but instead I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit that will allow you to think like me, move like me, speak like me, and see like me, that you will be set free from the very thing very thing that yet still wants to ensnare you. I think the truth of Jesus Christ is so very clear. We just don't believe it. They don't pro promote gospel music on the radio. What do they promote? The very stuff Jesus wants us to get out of. Hot girl summers, which don't mean having a fun summer, but it means sleeping around and being a hoe. P pr promoting drug dealing and killing, promoting scamming and promoting all this extra stuff that Jesus wants to pull us out of. And so we're laying with people, giving our members away to people and leaving empty when Jesus is like, wow, this is the very stuff I'm calling you from, but you'd rather listen to the world than listen to me. So now all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Paul said, I done turned off my radio. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. If they're promoting it at the intensity that they're promoting it, clearly they're aimed at enslaving you to something Clearly, there's an agenda to it. Why is the same song being played over and over again on the radio? That's stupid. There are millions of songs in the world, but you want to play this same song to brainwash people. Why is I Spice so popular with them same lame songs? It's brainwashing people. And us as Christians, we're supposed to be the leaders of the world that say, come out of this darkness into the light, but we're so busy playing in it ourselves, And so we experience seasons of chaos, calamity, and confusion because your today is only a reflection of what you thought and what you did yesterday. So because we were foolish yesterday, we've come to ourselves today, but we're standing in the effects of our past decisions. We as Christians are supposed to be different, but we're not tapped into the source of our differentiation. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomachs for food, but God will destroy both. You thought just because you... Anyways, God will destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. I don't know who told you you could just go around having sex. God has grace, yeah, but who told you you could just go around having sex? 
and not feel anything bad about it. Who 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 said you could just keep on going and laying around and not feel bad about it? Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us up by his power. OK, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Didn't I say that if God is to do something in the earth, he has to do it through people. God does things through people. You read this Bible. It's people. Where in this Bible is it? No one but God. No. In fact, God is more present in the people. Let's keep it moving. And God but run the Lord blah, blah, blah. Do you not know that your bodies are blah, blah, blah. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Shall I take me holy and acceptable unto God? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and pull Christ into hell? I literally sat and said, every time that we partake in sin, every time that we partake in unrighteousness, every time we partake in unholiness, we are literally pulling Christ back into the, into the very place that he overcame, which is hell. Why am I snatching Christ back into what he overcame? He overcame it that he doesn't have to go back to it. But we, every time we go back, even into the places God has called us out of, we are yet still bringing him back into the place that he overcame. He overcame death, hell, and the grave on the cross. So every time that we dance with sin, we're taking him all the way back to the cross, number one. But even number two, specific to our own lives. When God has set us free from something and we go back to the very thing that he set us free from, we're being, bringing him back into the very hell that he's already overcome. I don't know about you, but I'm not in a season of wanting extra battles. I'm itching to cut people off. I'm itching to kick people out my circle. I'm itching to change uh, my environment. I don't have time for extra battles. I don't have time for extra problems. I got enough weight by myself. If you're bringing on more than, that's, than what's necessary, I can't do it. That's why I see a difference between hearing and listening. If we could ever get to the place of actually hearing God from his word, then listening to what it is that we heard, we wouldn't have so much extraness in our life. Extra, extra, extra. Read all about it. Everything that we're experiencing in this season is extra for no reason. It's extra. When God has made it so simple, the Bible says that, I mean, yeah, the Bible says that the word is a lamp unto our feet and the light on our path. I love how the Bible talks about the Bible. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certain, certainly not. Shall I take my righteousness and dwell with your sinfulness just because you think that me separating myself from you is me thinking I'm better than you? I absolutely do think I'm better than you. Or maybe we're not at war with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. If I don't think I'm better than you, I surely think I'm better than the demon that has a hold of you. So either I'm going to stay with you and be a fool and let that demon have a hold on me too, or I'm going and I have to be bold enough to be set apart. Sanctified means to be set apart. Sanctified means to be separate. How can I say I'm really walking with the Lord Jesus while yet still dancing with the partner that he rejects? Don't take it for face value. Catch it. Um, or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Hmm. You thought you could just dip your toe in and keep on moving. No, two shall become one flesh. Why after sin is it so hard to tap into worship? Why after doing what you know you have no business doing is it so hard to tap back into reading your word, to get back into your Christian routine? Because I would argue routine is something that we dress up. I don't have another word for it. It's something we do. Our Christian routine. I had someone text me and they say, I know it's past Christian TikTok hours. That's why, like, that's a routine then. I don't, I don't want to tap into that. We're going to keep moving. But, but, but I, I, <laughs> do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her for the two he says shall become one flesh. There's no in, there's no, there's no in and out. You're either in or you're out. Be not lukewarm, be hot or cold. Verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 
Why is it when we go so long without worship? Why is it when we go so long without prayer? Why is it that when we go so long without praise? Why is it when we go so long without going to church? When we go so, so long without being in an atmosphere that cultivates the Lord Jesus Christ that we begin to feel empty? Well, it's because we've become one spirit with him and now we're trying to be separate of him. And it's like a tearing away. It's not a tearing away of everything that's not like him that only he shall remain. He who loses his life will find it. It's, uh, I'm showing you your life and you keep on rejecting the very life that I'm trying to show you. You keep on rejecting the very place that I'm trying to lead you. Every time I try to take you forward, backwards is more enticing. Not that backwards has more power. We're just not tapped into the flow. Verse 18, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside of the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. What do you do when you become an enemy of your own self? Sexual immorality is a sin against your own body, but I can think of all the self-sabotaging thoughts that we allow to plague our mind and how we just trip and stumble into this pit of hating ourselves, Promoting these messages of love, but how can you love yourself when the first thing you do is add weave and makeup and fake lashes? Not to say it's ugly, shout out to the beauty trends, but how can you say you love yourself when you don't love yourself at your most authentic level? Hmm. I think subconsciously we're all seeking validation. I think we're all trying to dress up loving ourselves when really we feel inadequate in our own bodies. I think we spend a lot of time comparing ourselves to the next person and that comparison is a poison that keeps us up at night where we feel like, wow, I can't live up to this expectation when there was one never set. What do you do when you become an enemy of your own self? What happens when you want to do what you don't do and you hate to do what you do do? What happens when you're standing in the way of your own blessing? What happens when you're standing in the way of your own breakthrough? Or let's not make it about blessings and breakthrough. What happens when you're standing in the way of your own peace? What happens when the reason that I'm up at night is simply because... I'm standing in my own way. Maybe just maybe it's me, oh wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I'm think, I am I think that's why Agur said I'm just a fool, truth be told. Because without Christ, I would be nothing. He who commits against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Do you not know that if you go without fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus, if you go without diving into this word, that you will be left empty? Whom you have from God and you are not your own. Every time I do what I want to do, every time I just go where I want to go and I don't acknowledge God in it, y'all missed it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, what acknowledge him? Why wouldn't I feel some type of way? Because I'm not my own. Hmm. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Why are we experiencing this season of heaviness? Because simply... Oh, so very simply, we don't recognize that we're not our own. We don't recognize that to truly walk with God is to always stand in a posture of submission. I said to you guys the other day, I was telling people, you know, God is our father and Jesus is our best friend. And we got all that good, great stuff. I no longer call you servants, but friends. For friends know not what their master is doing. We get so excited about that and we get so caught up in that that we miss the fact that he is still the sovereign Lord, our King, that we forget that he is still seated high above all the heavens, that he sits above the circle of the earth looking down upon us. The old church would say that he's too high, you can't get over him, too low, you can't get over him, too wide, you can't go around him. The only way that you can do is go through him. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. We're going to go to one more text. I said, hmm. Maybe, just maybe, if we could ever get to this place of understanding that we need Jesus, everything else would be smoother. I talk a lot about empowering ourselves to stand in what God has created us to stand in, which is discipline, power, love, and a sound mind, which is, you know, the ability to do whatever it is that we want to do. Psalms 1 even says that anything our hands will do, will, anything our hands do will prosper. But I don't want to highlight the equipping of self over the equipping of the Holy Spirit that is necessary to even have the wisdom to equip yourself. Simply, we're walking in a season without Jesus. We think we have him, but we don't. We believe we have him, but we don't. Simply because there's no way to get to him except for through his word. 
How do you know what he's sounding like if you are not tapping into his voice? We're going into chapter seven. Dead to the law, but alive to God. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. That's why we must die and be born again. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man. So many alarms. Jesus. If my audio is messed up, y'all just gonna have to pray for me and we're gonna have to make it through because I'm not stopping the live again. I'm gonna have to, I, oh my gosh. Ugh. I don't know why I have all these alarms. I'm kidding. I actually do know why I have all these alarms. Anyway, so then if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she'll be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law so that she is no longer an adulteress, though she has married another man. It's talking about sin. We must die to the law of sin and be born again to the law of Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Therefore, my brethren, right? Let, let's listen here. The reason that we have so much chaos, calamity, and confusion is because we're holding on to two things at once. I said in my video before, in order to get the new that God has for us, we have to let go of the old. We cannot keep both because then our hands are full. I, can, I, I must have room for what it is that God is trying to give me and let go of what it is he's trying to take from me. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, dead to the law through the body of Christ. We have freedom. Paul says all things are lawful for me because we become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another married to who married to what not married to the man God told you not to be married to not married to the girl he told you was not good for you married to him who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God. We get so caught up on our booze that we forget before the boo is God. If you focus on God, you'll find your boo. Had someone say, I can't wait to find I, I can't wait to find my husband. Your husband will find you if you just focus on God. Verse five. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. When I was operating within my own will, when I was standing in my own way, then sin had control of me. And in that control, sin was leading me to death and destruction. It was killing me. What I thought was bringing me life because it looked good was ending up killing me. I made the analogy last night that sin is more so like a little child who sees a flame and it looks very pretty. The parents like, no, don't touch that. It's going to burn you. The child says, oh, goo goo gaga. I want to touch the flame and goes and touches it and it burns its hand. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law, understand there was no sin before the law. God did not send the law that we would be set up for failure, but he thought that maybe, just maybe, if I gave you some rules and regulations, you'd stop doing what it is that you were doing, not understanding. Well, not that he didn't understand, I just say that phrase, but... We proved to him that we were incapable of living up to the law, so he had to have a plan B, which was Jesus Christ. Not that he makes things up as he goes along, for the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. This is just my verbiage and how I'm going to say it. But now, verse 6, we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. We're always waiting for deliverance. We're always waiting for the moment that our battle seizes. It already has seized. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter, that I shall walk forward and not backward. I had my ex literally reach out to me via Instagram. Um, they, they called me, blew it up. I didn't see it because I think they were in my request. I said, who is this? Right? Because y'all know I have my DMs open for y'all. I have my DMs open on TikTok, on Instagram. I got emails posted. I want to be able to hear from you. I want you to contact me. I'm over here working on this group for youth who are battling with homosexuality, lust, and greed, and all these different things that people keep reaching out to me about. I'm working on making a community for it. I don't know if I'm going to do mentorship. I don't know how I want to do it. Bear with me. Pray for me. The guy might give me the wisdom to build, the understanding to establish, and the knowledge to make it all look pretty. My ex reached out to me. I said, who is this? I didn't want to reject someone who was trying to get a hold of me. You already know. I had a feeling, but I was like, hmm, curiosity did kill the cat, but it didn't kill me. I said, I want to know. Who is this? I called on back on Instagram. Hello? I said, oh, block delete. But now you have been delivered from the law, having died to what you were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. 
Yesterday is going to come and knock on your door trying to pull you backward. Yesterday's employed. I told y'all temptation does not stop. It has a job. It has a pension, 401k, benefits, uh, profit sharing. It's good. It's not going to stop. It is up to us to learn and grow. What did we read? We're, we're, we're focusing on Proverbs 2. I'm in all this text, but we're talking about Proverbs 2. Where's my... Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. I want to make sure that y'all are, are, are getting it. I'm not all over the place here. Everything, if you remember where we started, you'll know where we are. My son, well, I'm going to read it and we're going to go through it. If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, you have to learn and you have to grow. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand and righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart, wisdom comes by learning from everything, that, from every mistake. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion, discernment will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. When you actually learn from what it is that you've done and stop doing the same thing over and over again, you'll be able to increase in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with man, meaning God wants you to increase in the spirit, but he also wants you to increase in the world. As Christians, we don't have to do what the world does and focus on money and chase after money. The Bible even says do not chase after possessions that are going to be left here. But if we seek after the kingdom of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then money comes and finds us. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I don't have to chase it. It's chasing me. The problem is we're dancing with the very thing God wants us to get out of. Yesterday is going to come and try to ensnare us. It's up to us to be disciplined enough to say, though that looks good, I know it ain't good. Though it may feel good, I know it's not good. That happened yesterday. I'm even intentional about brushing off every thought that reminds me of what happened yesterday. I may have said this yesterday. I may have messed up here yesterday. I may not have shown up and been perfect enough yesterday, but I cannot allow my inadequacies and mistakes of yesterday to stop me from standing and better today. I think Paul would say it. I count myself not to have apprehended or having yet been perfected. I'm not saying I've, I've been punished, nor am I saying that I've lived up to the standard. I'm just saying that I'm forgetting everything that I've done yesterday. I'm, ex I'm forgetting what I've done right. I'm forgetting what I've done wrong. And I am simply focusing on my upward call in Jesus Christ that there is more ahead. If y'all broke up, why get back together? Clearly, there must be more ahead. If God meant for it to work out, it would work out. I didn't understand why my mom and my stepdad got got divorced just to get back together. I end up saying it ain't my business. If it's good for you, it's good for me. I'm just confused why people go back to what it is that God says get out of. Not confused as if I don't understand that we have two things at work in us, but confused because I think after so long, after so many days of being hurt, after so much time spent being depressed, after so many seasons of being broken down and, and beaten, we would learn and we would say, maybe I've got to do better. Maybe this is what happens when I don't walk with Jesus. Maybe just maybe God is not this mysterious genie where we got to say things a certain way, flip it and twist it a certain way. Maybe God is so simple that if you you just do something different. If I was walking this way, all I've got to do is shift and start walking this way. Maybe, just maybe, then we'll get to what it is God wanted us to get to all along, which is peace. Law cannot deliver from sin. Verse 7, we're in Romans 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? I just told you guys. No, certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would have not known covetousness, covetousness, I would not have known that I shouldn't be coveting unless the law had said, you shall not covet. <laughs> I, I love the Bible. Come on. You better say what I said. Say what I said. But sin taking opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of evil desire. Produced in me all manner of evil desire. I want you to pay attention to the in. Produced in me. What are you in? What's in you? Produced in me. Sin being produced in me. All manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. 
I was alive once without sin, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Paul said there was a time in life where we got to do what we wanted to do and there was nothing more to it. But then God said, you've been living as fools. I want to enlighten you. And now we're dying because God is revealing to us a right path that we're then rejecting. God says, you're living in death. I want you to come out of death. I've shown you a right path. And every time we reject the right path, we're choosing death. So we wonder why our life falls apart and we wonder why life goes bad. It's because we are choosing that. We don't have to experience that. There are seasons and situations that we go through where God is using the, the using it to develop us, using pain to develop us, persecution to develop us, chaos to develop us. Ask Job about it. But at the end of the day, God gives us the opportunity to make decisions. I talked about De Deuteronomy 30. You can watch my video on YouTube, Morning Mantra, where I talk about this. Give me a second. I turned that off so that um it won't be loud while I'm um on here, but I'm starting to sweat and then I don't know if I don't think it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's move, let's move, let's move. <laughs> Verse 10, and the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, deceived me. Pay attention. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new. Everything that has been shall be. If you read Genesis 3, what did Eve say the serpent did? Deceived her. Sin is deceptive. It may look good, but it's actually bad. Deceived me. And by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Has then what is good. See, see, see I'm, I'm going to go back. Therefore, the law is holy and the, com the commandment holy and just as good. The reason people don't want to read their Bibles is because the Bible highlights their inadequacies and where they're falling short. The Bible says, okay, this is the standard that you're living beneath. So they'd rather shut the Bible and say, I won't listen rather than keep it open and listen to what it says. Why are people staying in homosexuality instead of coming out of it? Because they don't want to read their Bible and come to the revelation of what it actually is. Hmm, I'll leave it on the floor. I'll leave it on the floor. I feel the lotto spirit. I'm kidding. Therefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. 13, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal sold under sin. The law is spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. You'll not get it by reading it. Just by reading it, you've got to have it revealed to you by the spirit. If you want to know the truth of God, you've got to go through Jesus. For what I am doing, I do not understand. We've got to give Paul grace. He didn't understand what he was doing. I think we get grace when we don't understand what we're doing. But what happens when you know exactly what you're doing and you're not doing something different? For sin is to know better but not do better. Then we get mad and say, God, what happened? Or God, help me. God, why? He said, you already knew better. Why didn't you do better? For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. If I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that the law must be good because I keep doing what I don't want to do. So the law must be good because it's only aimed at stopping me from doing the very thing I don't want to do. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Let's give ourselves grace. Grace for the fact that we really do desire to do better. Grace for the fact that we really do desire to live righteousness, righteously, rightly, or whatever the right word is. Let's give ourselves grace that, yeah, I do desire to do better, but for some reason, worser keeps tri tripping me up, and I can't really blame myself because I got two things working in me. Not that it's not me, but it is me. Not that it is me, but it ain't me. Hmm. But sin that dwells in me. The Bible says if you're standing, be careful you don't fall. I said that already, but it's because sin dwells in us. God has bought our body at a price, but we have yet to be redeemed. So there's yet still sinful expectation. For I know that in me. I love how in the Bible they don't speak in wonderings, but they speak in surety. For I know that in that in me, that is my flesh, nothing good dwells. Paul says, I don't care what I do right. I know that I am yet still wrong. For to will is present with me. For to want to do it is present with me. But how to actually perform what is good, I do not find. I think there's humility there. But I think there's a power that lies in the humility of saying, I do not know. We just talked about Proverbs 30 when a girl says, I do not know. There's a power that lies in me saying, Lord, I don't know. Because if I do know, how can I get his grace for doing what I knew not to do? But Paul says, I don't know. 
truth be told. I have this part of me that knows something's got to change. I have this part of me that knows something isn't right. I have this part of me that knows that there is something evil at work in me, but how to escape from that very evil, that I do not know. For the good that I will to do, I do not practice, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Paul said, all right, I got to give myself a little bit of grace. I can't be a little bit of grace. I can't be that crazy. I can't be that crazy. I can't condemn myself. I can't really blame myself. It really wasn't all Eve's fault. The serpent played a part up in there somewhere. For the good that I will to do, I don't practice, but the evil I don't want to do, I do. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me because I don't have personality disorder. There's just something working against the righteousness of God that's working in me. I've got two things fighting for custody over my life. I've got one thing fighting for my mind. I got another thing fighting for my flesh and all of it wants to destroy me or it wants to save me. And I don't know where to balance myself. Truth be told, it's happening absent of me. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm really just here. I don't know what's going on. We're just sitting back and we're just chilling, watching it all play out. This is what Paul is saying. I'm not making it up. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. On the inside, I'm delighting in the law of God. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Y'all not hearing him. But I see another law. Paul said I had to pay attention to my actions. I had to pay attention to my behavior. There's a difference between people who love evil and love wickedness and people who are battling with something and so i paid attention to my behavior i paid attention to what i was doing and i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind 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 is not my brain my mind is not my brain but my mind is spiritual and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members oh wretched man that i am Paul says, I didn't even have to go to therapy. I kept the money for myself. All I had to do was look in the mirror. I took a couple notes on what I saw and I decided, come to the conclusion, it's been revealed that I ain't nothing but a wretched man. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Who will save me from myself? Wisdom. When wisdom enters your heart, Proverbs 2. And knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil. How do I even get there? Who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How do we get wisdom? How do we get understanding? How do we get discernment, discretion? Let's go to verse one, chapter two. Proverbs, my son, if you receive my words... And treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to what wisdom? If you incline your ear to wit, 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 wisdom and you apply your heart to understanding, you will cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. And the text goes on to say in its own way that you will get what it is that you specifically asked for. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. With my mind, with our mind, we serve the law of God. The, with our flesh, we serve the law of sin. And so I said, okay, Paul, are we to be comfortable living in this place of duality to excuse our actions and to excuse where we fall short and excuse our behaviors? Paul said, no, Robin, keep reading. That's where I got to Corinthians that said, no, that's when you exercise discipline. Great. I've gave y'all the, 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 the parts of the burger, but how do we ever get to that place? We get to that place by standing in alignment with Jesus. <laughs> I was telling someone, someone they, were, they were like, you know, I'm just feeling heavy. You know, I haven't been worshiping. I haven't been praying like normal. I said, why do you compromise yourself? Why, why do you change who you are just because the place that your feet in has changed? I told you guys about how I was in jail, still worshiping, still singing. I don't have it with me. I know I don't. I told y'all about how I was in jail. I literally took Isaiah 43, wrote the whole thing down, took some paper, was up in there taking notes, studying my text like normal. Why would I come out of who I am just because the place changed? Why would I allow what's going on on the outside to affect who I am on the inside? That's the problem. Maybe it's because we haven't become so solid in ourselves on the inside 
Maybe it's because we don't know who we are on the inside and all of that being valid. I say, if you have a wondering about yourself, don't ever wonder about God who says we have a treasure in an earthen vessel, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, they then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I want to go back. I was trying to stop it for if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then you will be equipped to stand against the grain. Then you will be equipped to walk in power and authority and in purpose and not in sin and evilness and wickedness. Then you will find your lifelong partner. Then you will find friends that lift you up and don't put you down. People who don't envy you and people who aren't jealous of you, but people who applaud you because light supports light. The thing is, we just keep trying to go around him. We literally in this world keep on trying to get there every other way but through him. I said as men, we're supposed to be leaders. And even as men, we're so busy trying to act like the next man and do TikTok trends in the name of Jesus that we aren't actually getting in this book trying to preach real tra change, trying to teach real change. I'd rather dance and do a little dance and add a little Bible verse onto it instead of as a leader leading people into the righteousness of God. Not that we should ever again focus on trying to not do this and not do that, but rather focus on Jesus. Someone said, do I preach against homosexuality? I said, no, I don't preach against anything. Matter of fact, I just preach towards Jesus. I'm not trying to pull you away from nothing. I'm not trying to turn you away from nothing. I'm just trying to push you toward Jesus that he might change you, that he might turn you, that he might do that. I'm just trying to get you to Jesus. That's it. Hello. <laughs> he stands at the door knocking. I'm over here. I'm the Amazon. I'm the Alexa. I'm the Google Home. Someone's at your door. Motion detected at front door. He's knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking. Life can be so much easier if we stop running away and start running to. How, Robin, do we actually get to the place of running to? It starts by doing this. You ready? It's going to be so deep. So I want you to pay a lot of attention. It is about to be deep. I'm going to do it really quickly. And I don't want you to miss it because this is going to change your life. Focus in on me. You ready? You ready? Do it again. It's that simple, okay? God is not that hard. Open your Bible. Read your Bible. Why is this season so complicated? Because we as Christians aren't reading our Bible. If you didn't know, now you know. Why am I stuck in overthinking? Why am I stuck in self-sabotage? Why can't I seem to break out of the thing that wants to break me? Because I'm not in my word. You have to live this word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that precedes the mouth of God. We want to spend so much time pretending that we heard from God, but no time in this word. I'm here to tell you, you cannot hear from God without being in this word. I'm here to tell you that if you thought you heard from him and you weren't in your word, you heard it wrong. Always compare what it is that you've heard to what it is that you've read because God will never contradict himself. God will never go against himself. God will never add more. God will never take away. God is everything in all, complete, full. It's it. It's done. Signed, sealed, and delivered. This is not a message of prosperity, though it is. Because truth be told, if you ever get into alignment with Christ Jesus, you will be able to experience the fullness of, the, of his riches and his grace. You'll be able to receive what it is that he has for you. Understand your life will continue to go in a circle until you learn. God is not going to elevate us in idiocy, being idiots. He's not going to elevate us in mediocrity. He's not going to elevate us in our foolishness. But no, we will begin to experience the same thing over and over again, the same circle in a different place until we get to the point of learning. To the point of not only hearing, but listening. I cannot tell you, and I don't know where God is going to take me on this because I'm really intentional about making sure that I'm growing in wisdom and growing in peace and growing, growing in discernment and discretion, that I'm more calculated. I said, don't be slow because then you'll be behind. You don't want to be fast because then you'll be ahead. You want to be timely. Wisdom is timely. Wisdom is calculated. It's strategic. It's strategic. We've got to listen. I don't know where it's going to take me, but I'm so tired of people who only hear and don't listen. Oh, my gosh. 
if we ever get to the place of actually listening, we will begin to understand how good God actually is, that he wants to give us so, so much, but it requires that we just listen. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your heart to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you just listen to what it is I'm trying to say, what it is I'm trying to give you, if you receive my words, I'm speaking them, they're right before you, but you've got to receive them. I had someone say, I don't even want to go there. Are you receiving what it is that God has for you? If I can find it, if I can find it, if I can find it, we'll see if I can find it. Hold on. I'm just reminded of Matthew. Even if I can't find it, I might be able to still yet say it. Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me one. I'm sure I underlined it. Um, and I think I know exactly where it is. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No, 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 no. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know where it is. I'm going to end up doing it off of my own dome in a minute, 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 in a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when God talks about losing your life for his sake that you'll find it, another translation, which wouldn't even be in here because this is the New King James Version. I can't remember what translation. Will say, he who tries to keep his life will lose it. Keep. Who, 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 when you try to restrain yourself from God, when I try to block myself from God, people leaving righteousness, leaving the light and choosing darkness by restraining themselves from God, we lose out. Ultimately. Life may seem like good gumdrops, candy canes, and rainbows by keeping what we have, but I promise it's better when you're willing to let go. I experienced a season of homelessness. Let's praise God for the season being over. I want to give a shout out to my dad. He said that I'd be on here bashing him. And I'm like, you know, I'm not only here trying to bash you, but I got to be truthful. You know, he like, why are you telling people all this stuff? I'm like, well, I got, uh, it's a lot of people that have been through what I've been through. I'm like, you're not going to understand everything I say, but I'm like, I'm not really on here trying to bash you. I just got to tell the truth, but I want to give a shout out to my dad. You got to learn how to many your relationships with your family. I'm going to teach on that in another day. Forgiveness, recompense, and all. recompense, I don't know if that's the right word, and all that good stuff. Season is over. But I went through that season to let go of myself, to say, God, I'm stepping out on faith in what you have for me. Don't do that just trying to be fun and fancy. I prayed about it, and God gave me the permission to experience him in a way that a lot of people don't get to see him. But it cost me something. I had to let, let go and lose out. That's what growing with God is like. I said before, if you're the same person to, to, to today that you were 10 years ago, you have not been walking with Jesus. You've been restraining yourself. If you're in the same place today that you were in last year, you have not been walking with Jesus. You've been restraining yourself. And that's not from a hypocritical place. I can only talk about what I know. For we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our what testimony. Paul was only preaching what it is that he learned by his experience. I'm just hoping that you guys might listen and learn from my experience so that you don't have to see for yourself. Shout out to our Real Fitz or what it fits, what it fits, Gerald, whatever her name is. I don't want you guys going to see for yourself. You're seeing right now. That's why we're in this, the, the season that we're in. That's why people are experiencing so much heaviness. People are battling with losing their faith and letting go. People are battling with turning from the Lord Jesus. Oh my gosh, has your mind not been made up? I said at the end of the day, no matter how hard it gets, my mind is made up. I'm signed, sealed, and delivered on Jesus. Devil, if you were going to take me out, you should have did it. If you were going to change my mind about him, you should have did it. I'm settled and sealed in him. The reason that this is all happening in this season is simply because we're not being connected, which is what the devil is aimed at in the first place. He doesn't want us connected to God. I said in the garden, the devil did not want Adam and Eve. The devil just wanted them away from God. So sometimes somebody will make it seem like they want you. They'll smile in your face. They'll bat their eyes. They'll flash their riches and their wealth before you and make it look like they want you, make it look like they got your back. But it's the same thing Satan did to Eve, saying, I've got all this stuff for you. I want you to pay attention to all this stuff. And I'm using all these words to pull you away from God. Then when you get away from God, you'll find out I never really wanted you in the first place because when they went and hid amongst the trees, the serpent was nowhere to be found. They fell, he ran. Mission accomplished. There's a saying, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you were wanting to spend. Are you dumb? Sorry, let me not, because I've been there too. I'm just saying, if we read our word, Satan has no new tricks. 
the lust of eye, the pride of life, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and pride of life. All these things are saying, if you cannot stop being your own God, if you cannot stop being so full of yourself and focused on yourself, if you cannot humble yourself before God, then that's it. When we say now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and present us faultless, that is only for the upright and the righteous. And that's why I say it's not about behaviors. It's so simple. It's about just sticking with the Lord Jesus and obeying his word. People want to grow in faith and do all these big things. And it's like, y'all got to start with baby steps. <laughs> Have you even obeyed God in the smallest ounce possible? <laughs> Have you even kept a disciplined schedule when he said you got to change your schedule? Like y'all trying to get to step two. We got to start with step one, ladies and gentlemen. We have to start with step one. I was literally... Um, I was waiting to come here to Dallas. I was standing outside and I was worshiping and I was singing and, and I wasn't paying attention because I was worshiping and I was singing. And I went off of this curb area. I was like standing on the edge of this curb. You know what I'm saying? And I stopped paying attention. Excuse me. I don't know. Maybe I went to step down. Don't know. Maybe I just fell. Whatever the case. I think I might have went to step down and I thought I was falling. Like I, I literally was falling like, oh, my gosh, because it was nothing beneath me. Then right when I started to process the fact that I was falling, there was a step there to catch me. I'll have to post the video. Y'all know I had to record a video. I'm going to find a revelation and everything. I got a little bit excited, you know what I'm saying? And then I got a little nervous because people started coming, pray for my boldness. And you know what I said? They said, Lord, give us boldness that we might speak your word. And so I got a little bit nervous that people were coming and listening to me. So I stopped recording the video, but I'll post what I have because I started to realize that this is how Jesus is in our life. When we think we're falling, he catches us before we can even rest in the fall that wasn't even really taking place. It wasn't necessarily a fall, but it was a step to Jesus. It may look like a fall, but it's really just a step to Jesus. Life may look like it's falling apart, but it's really just a step to Jesus. Things may look like they're going bad, but it's really just a step to Jesus. My cousin thought about committing suicide. It wasn't really a fall. It's really just a step to Jesus. We just have to shift our perspective. We're so quickly aimed at being mad at God instead of seeing him for his goodness. Maybe, just maybe, God, you've allowed this that we might get closer to each other. Maybe, just maybe, God, you've allowed this that I might have a reason to stick with you. Paul said, I prayed that the, the thorn might be removed, but my God told me he wanted me so bad that he let me keep it. Ooh, hallelujah. He wanted me so bad that he let me keep it. Understanding that if I didn't have it, I wouldn't need him. So maybe, just maybe, we're only going through this season that we might have an opportunity to come to the revelation of who God actually is. Isn't that what this is all about? Isn't that what we've been focusing on? The Bible did say that you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. If we go to verse nine, it does say, then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. Maybe just maybe God is on a mission to get us back to faith. Maybe just maybe the same thing that took place in the garden is taking place today where people are falling to the deceptions of Satan and the deceptions of self. We can't give Satan that much credit in the garden. Eve was a dummy too. No shade, girl. I've been there too, but Eve was absolutely a dummy because she was full of herself. Maybe, just maybe, this is a faith fight. Maybe, just maybe, the devil wants us to turn away from the very God that is trying to turn us to. Listen, we're going. Where are we going? I don't know, but we're going somewhere. I'm going to heaven. There was this amazing video. It said, if you get to heaven and you don't see me there, <laughs> baby, you ain't in heaven, you in hell. Where are we going? I don't know. Up yonder, far above all wickedness and witchcraft and all bad. Where are we going? I don't know. Just somewhere far away from here. I want to go forward. I don't want to go backward. And I come to find that as much as we desire to do it, we don't necessarily have the instructions on how. That's Romans 7. We just read it. Yet we do. And we're gone here, ladies and gentlemen. It starts right here in this word. I encourage you. Clarity lies within this book. The Bible says so very clearly. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> yeah, but that the word is a lamp on our feet and a light on our path. Every answer to your question lies in this book. Every answer is in this book. You need not go anywhere else for the answer. The only reason people go everywhere else is because they don't like what the word says. 
I have someone who reads this book that talks about the Bible rather than reading the Bible. Are you not going to the Bible because you just don't like what it says? Because you'll realize that you're doing exactly what God does not want you to do? We can try to run from God all day and we're going to trip and stumble ourselves up in hell. No, you know, you know, you know, your behaviors and your actions aren't going to end you up in hell. It's your heart posture and your restraint against God. God already has the grace for our inadequacies. God already has the grace for where we fall short. God already has the grace for where we mess up. He told Paul verbatim, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is only made perfect in your weakness. God has the grace. But we can only receive the grace when we're willing to let go of ourself our ideologies, our will and our way, what we want that isn't good for us and say, God, you know what? Have your way. Is it not clear that it hasn't worked out? Is it not clear that something must change? I believe God is so very bold. I believe he's so very clear that we should never have to wonder if we're in alignment with him or not. It's clear. It's obvious. The very fact that you have to wonder lets you know that something's not right. Eve started wondering when she stepped out of alignment with God. And sometimes being out of alignment with God would be confusing. That's why I said sometimes noticing evil takes you looking in the mirror and saying, hmm, who are you? Alignment with God sometimes, misalignment, disalignment, not being in alignment with God, whatever word it is, sometimes looks like you being able to quote the very word that God said to you, quote the scripture and yet not abide by it. I'm going to Genesis 3 and I promise we're done. I'm not going to be here much longer. I'm not going to be here much longer. Let me go to Genesis 3. Let's flip these pages a bit faster. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Let's go to verse six. That's verse two. So then the woman who saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Sometimes being out of alignment with God still looks like you knowing his word. But do you know it enough to abide by it? Rather, I don't even like the way that sounds. Sometimes being out of alignment with God means you'll still know his word. The question is, are you abiding by the word? You'll know you're in alignment with God, not by how you can quote it, but how you're walking in it. I like that one a little better. Hopefully that made sense. Not by how you can quote it, but how you walk in it. I know a lot of pastors who can quote the Bible, but ain't walking in the word. Are you walking in what you're preaching? Are you walking in what you're teaching? Are you walking in what you're believing? Or are you just reading in the Bible hoping that'll get you into heaven? I know a whole lot of people who read the book but don't walk by the book and that ain't gonna get you in heaven. You gotta be doers of the word. I promise life gets simple when you become a doer of the word. Everything that has been will be for there was nothing new under the sun. It's the same thing. Truth be told, we wouldn't make so many mistakes if we ever read our Bible because it teaches us. Listen here. I've only come here to shine a little bit of light in a dark world. I've only come here to say a small little thing in a big place. I've only come here as a sinner made righteous by the glory of God. I can't say I'm flocking with the sinners. No, <laughs> but I can't say that I'd be anything without the Lord Jesus. I'm just here to shine a light in a dark place that you might understand the goodness of God, his grace and his mercy, the abundance of love that he has for us. Sometimes love looks opposite of what you think. Sometimes love looks like, no, you're not doing good. And I'm only telling you you're not doing good so that you can do better. I don't want you to be comfortable with mediocrity. So I'm not just going to say, yes, keep going, doing what I know is killing you. Sometimes love looks like chastening for whom the Lord loves. He chastens. Sometimes love looks like me looking in the mirror and say, self, I love you enough to tell you we've got to get it together. How can I say I really love myself if I'm really just patting myself on the back for my stupid decisions and mistakes? No, I can give myself grace and not become a bully towards myself. But I'm not being a friend if I'm not telling myself where I'm falling short. Self. Paul says, we're messed up. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to do right, but I surely find myself in wrong. Yet I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus. And I'm just here to shine light on Jesus Christ today, the author and perfecter of my faith, the author and perfecter of faith in itself. Hello, Christopher. Good morning. I love you so much. That's my point. That's my purpose. Um, here, I was going to say something. I, 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 the Bible says...
that if you believe with you in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will be saved. I don't want to just sit up here and talk about Jesus and not give an opportunity for somebody to be saved. You don't need the bishop to lay hands on you. You don't need to even go to church. It's Sunday morning. We can have church right here, right now. We are the church, the body of Christ. The building is only so that the preacher has a place to fellowship and the people can come, but we are the body of Christ, okay? So listen, um, it starts right now. If you're not saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, let's start right here. Here we go. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Father, I give you my life today. I believe you in every way, shape, and form that you are. I can't say that I'm perfect. I know I'm saying a lot of words. I'm going to just pray for you, y'all. Just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, every single person that has a heart that is open for you. God, I pray that you receive them now in this moment. Father, I pray that you look past all of their sin, all of their inadequacies, anything that would stop them from getting to your glory, oh God. For I know that you're not a God that looks at the dirt, but you're a God that hovers into darkness, knowing that you could command it to light by your presence. So, Father, I ask that you enter the heart of every single person, that they may confess the Lord Jesus with their mouth, believing it in their heart, oh God, letting you be Lord in, the, in their life, oh God. Father, we're not perfect, but we're here with you. Father, we're all sinners, for the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short. Give me one second. All have sinned and fallen short. All have sinned and fallen short. So we're here together in community. Not that I'm better than anyone just because I'm the speaker. Not that I'm better than anyone just because I was the teacher. Not that I'm better, but that we are all one and the same humans, saved by your grace, saved by your blood, saved by your forgiveness and your righteousness. Jesus, we're only here because of you. I can't take any glory. No one else can take any glory. We're only here because of you. So God, I'm thankful. I think sometimes we focus so much on asking you to give us something that we don't actually appreci appreciate what it is you've already given us, which is your grace, your mercy, your wisdom, your knowledge, your revelation. It's all available for us. We just have to receive it. So, Father, I'm ending where I started, which is just that you will change our heart posture to get back into a place of receiving, oh God, that we can get back to lifting up our hands and saying, God, I don't know the right answer. God, let your will be done in my life. I think sometimes we walk around acting like we know how it's all going to play out. God, sometimes we just want to impress you. But truth be told, we know not, oh God. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief is an indication that though I know something, I'm missing everything. Oh God, in this moment, we humble ourselves to knowing nothing. But the Lord Jesus and him crucified, I think that's the beginning of everything. Maybe if I can just rest in the Lord Jesus, you will do everything else. So, Father, in this moment, we rest before you. We rest in your grace. We rest in your mercy. We rest in your loving kindness. Oh, God, I'm thankful that you don't just leave us in mediocre, but you're always pulling us into exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think. And we always point that to something tangible, as in finances or resources, as in opportunities. Opportunity. But, oh God, I think the greatest gift that you've given us is the gift of salvation and the pardoning of our sins. The greatest gift that you've given us is a peace that the world didn't give and the world cannot take away. But you said your peace surpasses all understanding. God, I'm thankful for understanding in this season to master your word. Father, I pray that you begin to speak to us in a new way. For you said that you speak in wisdom, that you speak in knowledge, that you speak in understanding, and you speak in revelation. So, Father, if we can authentically tap into your voice. We will have everything that we need to build, establish, and even add on to what's been built and established. God, I pray that in this season, we get back to a place of unshakable faith, unbreakable faith. And if I can hashtag Mike Todd, we can get back into crazy faith, oh God, believing you for the impossible, believing you for the unimaginable, oh God, for believing you for something that we can't even put our mouth on, oh God, that we'll have to be silent. What it is that we're expecting God to do, don't ask. I don't know how to say it. Lord, let us get back into a bold faith. Like Job, no matter what happens, no matter how it looks, oh God, we'll be able to say, though you slay us, yet will we trust you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come up against every manipulative voice of the enemy that would have your people believe that they have been defeated when you said that we're more than conquerors. God, our sin cannot stop us. God, our inadequacy cannot stop us. God, we may be stupid going in a circle, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. God, maybe just maybe we are insane, but I'm so thankful that you go far beyond insanity, oh God, for there is nothing that can stop us 
us, nothing that can ensnare us because you overcame death, hell, and the grave. My Bible says that we have power over every serpent and scorpion, over every power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, if I can ask you for anything, it's that we just come to a better revelation of who you are, Jesus. I firmly believe that if we could ever understand the fullness of your glory, we'll be able to step outside of, of ourselves. We'll stop, stop trying to act like we got it all together and we'll find power in letting you be the sovereign Lord, all powerful in every way. Oh God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you weren't looking for perfection when you chose us, oh God, but it was our inadequacies that attracted you. You're not a God that went into light looking for light because you were light. You are a God that goes into darkness looking for darkness because you're light. You want to be effective, oh God, and I'm thankful for you. Simply put, God, let's wrap it up. I love you, Jesus. You're so amazing in every single way, shape, and form that you reveal yourself in. I'm thankful for your nurturing. I'm thankful for your care, your covering, and your keeping. Your word says you'll do it. Father, I ask that you just show us how to get in alignment with you. I think sometimes we overcomplicate it when it's so simple. Father, I pray that you show your children, oh God. You said the steps are already ordered. Show us how to take them in Jesus' name. Listen here. I pray. Amen. I love you all. Um, this is Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us what rejoice and be glad in it. Um, and y'all stop entertaining stuff, people in these comments, please. We don't do that. Y'all know that. I, and I've got Bible to back it up. Okay. I, I've got Bible to back it up that y'all should leave these people alone. <laughs> Literally. Amen. I love you. I'm not trying to pronounce your name. A-N-I-T-T-A. -T -T -A. I love you. God bless you. Um, I'm believing God to do exactly what it is that you're expecting him to do in the name of Jesus. This is the first day of the week. Come on, Meg. This is how you start the week off, right? Um, I need to hear the prayer. Thank you. I love you, Kelly. Um, shout out to you, Stephanie. Please don't know what the please is for. But listen, guys, the same way that y'all be acting in this comment section is the same way y'all be acting in this world. If you could ever tap into the beauty of God, you wouldn't care about the ugliness of the world. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter how the enemy comes up against you. When the enemy comes in like in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. The standard is to ignore everything that is beneath you. Stop paying attention to what's beneath you. I said this, listen, I said, how could Eve absolutely have fallen when in order to even talk to the serpent, she had to look down? Did that even make sense? You angled your head down. You should have known that it wasn't worth your time. Stop entertaining what is beneath you. The Bible does say to have a defense ready for the word, but the word is already coming forth defending itself. You need not argue with fools because you're missing out on what it is that God has for you. So in a moment that was supposed to bless you, it's cursed you because now you're fighting a fight you had no business fighting. For our weapons are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of what? Strongholds. If it's a problem up in them comments, you need to pray for some support. Don't sit up here arguing. Stop. I promise you, you'll have more peace in life if you start focusing on Jesus and stop focusing on what's going on around you. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm done. Peter had an expectation when he stepped off the boat to get to Jesus. What happened was this. He started paying attention to the distractions going around him that were aimed at making him not reach Jesus. Let me say it a little bit better. The enemy is always going to descend a distraction to stop you from focusing on Jesus. It's up to you to stand the test of time and say, I've got my eyes locked in on you, Jesus. There may be some winds. There may be some waves. That's expected. But you got to lock into Jesus. If you can lock into Jesus, I promise everything that you need will come to fruition. Lock in on Jesus. Is that not what we've been talking about this whole time? You can't say that you heard anything that I said if you are yet still doing the opposite of focusing on Jesus. That is all that this was about. I'll repost the replay on YouTube and I'm probably going to call it Focus on Jesus. I don't know. We'll see. I love you and I desire to see you win. I desire to see you prosper. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let us all go hearing the word, then listening. To listen is to respond to what it is that you've heard in accordance with what it is that you heard. Don't do something random. Do something purposeful. And may the God of all peace, after you have suffered a while, establish and perfect you. <laughs> After you've suffered a little while, <laughs> I can't say it's always going to be gumdrops, candy canes, and rainbows. But one thing I do know 
as that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to what his purpose, his purpose. Say, God has purpose for me. God has purpose for me. If you thought he didn't have purpose for you, I want to remind you that God has purpose for you on today. I just want one person who believes that God yet still has purpose for them to say, God has purpose for me. God has purpose for me. God has purpose for me. I want you to be bold enough to focus on the purpose that God has for you. Paul says, I don't give a crap about what's going on. I'm focused on Jesus, my upward call in Christ Jesus. We're gone. To all of my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, y'all know I love y'all. Y'all know that, right? Well, y'all know that. This is my thing right here. I love a good Sunday morning. May the Lord continue to bless y'all and keep y'all. Um, may he cause his face to smile upon you and grant you shalom. Shalom. For those of you who don't know, it means peace, everlasting peace. Jehovah Shalom. <laughs> let me not, let me not get into his name. Hold on. Jehovah Jireh, what do you call him? Jehovah Sitkanu, my righteousness. Jehovah Nisi, he's my banner. Jehovah Gabor, he fights for me when I can't fight, my, fight for myself. I'm so thankful. Oh, hallelujah. I gotta go. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. All right, all right. We're gone. I love y'all. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Whew, Jehovah. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody said I need healing. They said Jehovah Rapha. Y'all better come on. Whatever you need, he has it. Whatever you need. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. You have not because you ask not. Oh my gosh. Stop asking for what you can get in the world and ask for what the world can't give. Stop waiting on the doctor to change it. Oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's move, let's move, let's move. I love y'all. I love you, Christopher. Peace out, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't he good, y'all? <laughs> Ain't he good?